Well, welcome to the Botany Boy channel. Today we're going to be looking at a genus, Terrace, which is a fairly common uh, genus here. Uh, there are a number of species distributed in the southern islands, but even here in Kyushu we have a number of species. This uh, is the largest species. This is the lovely uh, Terrace Wallichiana. As you can see, this uh, semi-wild stream behind me is uh, full to the ears with it. And um, today we'll be looking at this plant and other members of the genus. Uh, some of them are commercially important in the horticultural trade, but uh, the bulk of them uh, remain fairly obscure. So let's go take a look at it. A common species throughout much of Japan is Terrace multifida. This plant is weedy even in its native homeland and probably should be avoided as a garden subject since it tends to spore everywhere. This species likes rocky, sunny areas, both human-made and also natural. Um, and you'll see why in the next clip that it got its Japanese name, Inomoto-so. Its Japanese name means a grass that grows near a well. And here you can see it growing in a similar situation out of this drainage hole. A closely related species is Terrace cretica. Uh, which is known as ribbon fern in the horticultural trade. It seems to prefer wetter sites, and here you can see it growing along this seep with other fern species. Its Japanese name is Oba Inomoto So, which means a large leafed version of Multifida. Uh, later on, we'll see how you can tell these two apart in the field. While this species does prefer to live uh, in the ground, you can see it also sometimes like this little one sprouting up in cracks in the rocks. A species that's difficult to discern from Cretica is this Terrace nipponica. This is a very common species in a horticultural trade as well, usually sold as a variegated form. The leaves tend to be a darker green and have wavy margins, but the distinguishing characteristic is the separation of the terminal pinnae. We'll see that later on. The fertile fronds of all these species are longer and thinner than the sterile fronds, and the spore are borne on the margins of the pinnae. These forests are also home to the Japanese giant centipede, um, this is a feared animal because it is quite venomous, and if you are bit, it will send you to the hospital. Uh, I do not know of any fatalities. Perhaps uh, very weak people or young children are at risk, but very nasty bite on this one. Okay, well, here we are streamside, and um, what I want to do is to show you the differences between uh, these three fairly closely related species. Um, on the uh, left here we have Nipponica, in the middle we have Cretica, and on the side to the right here we have Multifida. Multifida is the most obvious one. Um, if you look at it, you'll see that there is a kind of a wing that extends down the rachis almost halfway. Towards the base, it gets clear stem there. But here there's a kind of a wing on either side. This is the most distinguishing feature of this plant, and it's very obvious to tell. Um, by the way, these are all sterile fronds. Kretika has a slightly different arrangement. Um, you'll notice that the, uh, there is almost a wanting of a wing here at the top here where these three pinnae come off each other, but there mostly is clear stem. Um, this is a typical Cretica type leaf. Now, if we look at uh, Nipponica, you'll see that there's a very clean break between all the pinnae and um, there also is a tendency for there to be more waviness within each pinnae and a kind of uh, almost serrated look to it because it's so 
um, wavy, uh, and it's very tempting to say that that is um, a distinguishing feature, but you'll find that all of these species, including like look at Multifida here, can be very wavy. It, it depends. Sometimes they're flat, sometimes they're wavy. So that's the way you tell the three apart in the field. Looking at the fertile fronds, uh, the difference between this is uh, Nipponica and this is Critica, uh, it's very difficult to see uh, any uh, difference there, so that's a very hard thing. If you look though at the end pinna again, you can see how these are kind of um, all coming together, whereas these are more separate. Um, Multifida, as with the uh, sterile frond, you can see that there is a kind of a wing-like structure, so that's a sure way of telling that you've got Multifida. Another quick look up close, this is Nipponica, showing the clear stem between the pinnae. Cratica, showing slight overlapping of the last three pinnae and then Multifida with its little wing-like structures between the pinnae. A plant that grows in drier sites is Terrace Dispar. Uh, this is also a more subtropical to tropical fern and is named after the disparate size of some of the pinnae along the front, which we'll see later. Here you can see those long pinnae at the base of the frond, whereas the terminal pinnae are just a long line. This is again how the plant got its name. The fronds are paper thin and although this is a lovely species I do not think that it is in cultivation. As in other terrace species the spore are borne along the margins of the pinnae and yes that is a chicken you're hearing in the background. I purposely saved the largest and, in my opinion, the best two species for last. First is Terrace excelsa. This huge fern is uh, home to more wet sites, uh, swampy sites, and also along streams and seepy banks. Its arching fronds can be up to three meters long, making it one of the largest ferns in the area. The sterile fronds are more compact, shorter, and closer to the ground. This is a bipinnate fern, meaning that the fronds split twice, unlike the first three species in this video. Remarkably, this elegant species appears not to be in cultivation to any great extent which is surprising given its great size and beauty. The terminal pinnae is often much longer than the other pinnae, a distinguishing characteristic. As in other terrace species, the spores are born at the margins of the pinnae. The pinnae margin actually rolls over the spores and protects them as they're developing. A common animal of freshwater streams throughout Japan is this little crab. Uh, this actually was eaten traditionally by Japanese people. And you can see this poor little guy has had a run in with somebody and lost some of his legs. Finally we come to Terrace Willichiana, that large fern you saw growing at the beginning of this video along the stream. This species is perhaps the most interesting for horticultural purposes due to its large size and its huge spreading pentagonal shaped fronds. Plants in the Fukuoka area typically do not exceed about a meter and a half in height, although in more tropical areas I've heard they can get larger. Uh, as you can see this is a clumping fern and uh, some sources cite it as being a runner, uh, like a true bracken, but this is not the case. They are slow creeping ferns that clump.
we're lucky to see a crozier growing this late in the season. Uh, as you can see, it grows initially in an arc, but as you'll see in the next sequence, the fronds stand directly out of the ground with no bend to them. Here we see the stipe standing in a straight up position and then splitting three times and then the two base pinnae splitting again to create a pentagonal shaped frond from above. Though the overall shape of this fern may not suggest a terrace species, these spore growing along the margins of the pinnae with the pinnae margin rolling over them is a dead giveaway that this indeed is just another break fern. Well that's the video today. Uh, I'm going to leave you with this mantis who's enjoying the last warm days of autumn. So please come back for our next adventure. Thanks.